Uh, hi, hello, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to MSD Public Lecture Series today with uh, Verena Lindenmeyer of uh, EM2N. Uh, uh, before we uh, begin, I'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I am, the lands of uh, Wurundjeri people of the Kulin nations, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and those emerging, and to all indigenous and Torres Strait Islanders witnessing uh, this, this event. Um, I'm George Stojanovic, Senior Lecturer in uh, Architectural Design. Uh, it is um, uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Verena Lindermeyer, uh, who um, has prepared a lecture titled Urban uh, Social Housing. Um, she'll present a recently completed project for the new housing on Brisestrasse in uh, Berlin, another work of EM2N Architects, a practice founded by Matthias Miller and Daniel Nigli in 1997 with offices in Zurich and Berlin. Uh, Virna is an associate at uh, EM2N and a general manager at their uh, Berlin office. And she has followed the British uh, housing project uh, through uh, to the completion. So that's all uh, from me. I uh, just want to let you know that we have a Q&A function uh, that you can use to send your questions either uh, throughout the lectures or uh, at the end. And we hope you'll uh, have some questions for uh, Virna. So, I'm um, uh, handing it over uh, to, to our speaker. Uh, Verena, uh, over to you. Good morning. Hello. Thank you um, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, or good evening at your place. Um, I will share the screen now. And thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm happy to show you the two projects we did in Germany. So thank you very much. Um, I hear you're interested in uh, cooperative housing and multifamily buildings. I'm very happy to present two of our uh, projects <clears throat> you today. Um, you heard my name is Verena Lindenmeyer and I've been managing the office for seven years now. Um, I also taught at university for five years as a research assistant uh, in the department of A13, building construction and design with Professor Ute Frank at Techn Technical University of Berlin. And at the same time, I set up um, the EM2N office in Berlin. In the beginning, we were only three employees here. Meanwhile, we are between 15 and 13 employees. And um, Henrike Kortemeyer is also now a member of a management and supports me in Berlin office. She's not on the photo yet here. Um, the two general managers, um, Daniel Nickley, Matthias Müller, uh, they founded the office uh, in Zurich with, and now we're like 70 employees there and the other associates you see on the picture here. In today's lecture, I would like to introduce to two residential projects, as I said, with additional program. One is already realized and the other one is still in the planning. That's um, you see from from um, the website. The first project is new housing on Prizestraße. You see up here. Um, it's our first realized project in Germany. We are particularly pleased that it received uh, the BDA uh, prize, the Bund Deutsche Architekten Prize, in two thousand twenty one right away. The client was a large um, public housing company from the city of Berlin. Um, the city has six public housing companies. And the pro uh, second project I would like to show you is um, here. You can see it here in Bremen. It's another social housing project with 170 apartments. And it is a conversion and an extension. The client was also a large public housing company from Bremen. Let's start with the project Brisestraße now. Um, with this project, I would like to explain the following topics. How is a project a hybrid urban fitting piece? What measures need to be done to strengthen the neighborhood? And how can attractive open space be created? What does it mean for the ground floor zone? And how do I reach flexibility and economy, low costs, and which apartment mix is necessary for a social mix? And what does the potential um, of the pergola is. The project um, Brisestraße, it emerged from urban living. It was a project um, 
experiment in housing in 2013 and 14 by the Berlin Senate Building Director Regula Lüscher. The spatial program and the following competition allowed more freedom and creativity than usual. That was the special thing about it. Ideas and thoughts on questions of standards, changing demographics, a new social coexistence and a living environment, the variety of today's life situation and life models were part of the task. It was thus in force field of current and important topics, such as inner development or structural densification of our cities and the creation of inexpensive living space and the need for variety of offers to mix both the residents and the possible mixed users. In the beginning of the planning, there was the question whether we should um, keep the existing garage and if it could be converted and reused. You can see the garage here on the photo. It, the existing garage was not converted because the dust uh, desired density and utis utilization of the property could not be achieved. And in addition, um, the clear height was not enough for housing. So that's why we had to um, take it down. Um, then, um, as I said before, there was a competition announced later, which we won together with Manmade Land Landscape Architects in 2016. The client was Stadt und Land, the housing association of Berlin. A new building with 101 apartment was to be planned. Here you see the aerial photo with the existing uh, garage and parking lots on the, uh, on the roof. The design idea was the project should become a hybrid mediator in the Rollberg district, that's the uh, name of the area, and its existing structures and typologies. The historical development has resulted in narrow perimeter block structures in this quarter. You see here the, the narrow block structures. Um, and our proposal was um, for the new building was a hybrid figure and it consists of several parts. It forms an interface between um, the old blot edge, edge structure with its firewalls and um, it and also the, the structure from the 70s um, of the late modernism here on the left side. The building block transfers in the height profile. The figure combines the different scales and typologies of its surroundings. So the project can take one task of an urban piece and that transfers and condenses. Now we'll show you some visualizations from the competition. That's the inner courtyard. We tried to get a lot of green inside, but the neighbors weren't uh, so happy to, about it. So we couldn't um, realize that. Another important topic is the neighborhood. Neighborhood is already starts on the ground floor. The Rollbergviertel is a district with social tensions. The aim of the project was to achieve a stronger social mix and accordingly, the offers provided on the ground floor should be considered and developed properly. With this building complex, we wanted to place mixed functions such as living and working, shopping, relaxation, and in a small space. Man-made land architects designed the landscaping and open spaces and the inner courtyard. Semi-public and public areas with cafe shops are extended to the outside. The degree of publicity of the open space decreases from the outside of the block to the inside of the inner courtyard. Here is the outside, and then here the inner courtyard with the greenery. The outdoor space in the west offers a passage for pedestrians. And in its widening in the south part, here you find a public square with a cafe. Um, to sit uh, outside together. The two passages on the ground floor lead to the inner courtyard, which is available for the inhabitants. So you can cross through the inner courtyard here. That's a picture after it has been 
built during the first weeks of the square. They were having a lot of parties outside in the summer. And residential studios developed along the western border of the plot. And residential students with sale potential, which means there could be little offices, art studios, work, live studios are located among the Brise Straße. The project is a kind of flexible urban shelf with a simple basic structure. Each of the four parts of the building reacts on it, to its position in the overall structure, in alignment and to the firewall. The parts of the building are specific, but have a modular structure with optimized dimensions and are coordinated with one another. Especially during the planning process, we were able to make um, adjustments to the apartment with little effort. Different flats with different sizes can be realized within the large structure. As I mentioned, the studio apartments on the ground floor. Then we have the cluster apartments in yellow, along the firewalls. The one room apartments in darker green and the two room apartments on this side. And in the corners, we have the bigger flats, the three and four room apartments. So no changes um, to the structure had to made, be made for this diverse range of apartments. The economic goals um, of this project, they're very ambitious and we achieved it with the following measures. A span optimized supporting structure, the number and quality of the open staircases and elevators, the reduction of um, bath types, a modular facade, and the use of industrial and rough materials. The desire and specific mix of apartments was achieved. We call it the Berlin mix, a mix of housing and business and different sizes of flats. Here you see the ground floor with residential studios and the cafe at the square. So these are all the studios and the cafe in the corner. The underground car park is located under the green inner courtyard. This had to be restored to the ongoing lease contracts. Apart from that, there are no longer any parking regulations anymore in Berlin. So that allows cost effective constructions. Here you see the parking lot. All apartments on the upper floors in the outer blocks of the building are oriented outwards and in inwards. So a one room apartment is oriented to the north and south. And the two room apartment is west east um, and the living and kitchen areas are faced to the inner courtyard and to the pergola. And the private rooms, sleeping rooms are faced outside with a private balcony. And the three and four room apartments are in the corners. And it was used as like a size regulator to ensure the specific sizes of the apartment. This is necessary for the subsidized apartment. The proportion um, is was that time 30% subsidized apartment over the whole building. Nowadays, it's already 50%. And barrier-free apartments are often placed on the ground floor. We have distributed the 18 barrier-free apartments all over the floors, um, floor levels. The residential groups, also known as cluster apartments, are located on the firewalls here and in this block. The main feature of the large cluster apartments are the self-contained small residential units with their own kitchenette and bathroom, the additional offer and communal living room, and the kitchen, library, and sometimes a guest room. Here you see the small units, like two-room apartments, within the big um, apartment with a kitchen and um, TV room or library. And here you have the big balcony or pergola. On this side at the firewall, we have the maisonette. Um, some of the clusters are um, planned as maisonette flats and they are facing the inner courtyard only. So here on the picture, you see um, the different scale from the maisonette living and the, and the regular shelf. 
Now we uh, want to have a look in the apartments. The diverse range of different apartment sizes, transient urban lifestyles for young and old inhabitants, families, students and singles. And small residential models are created with an offer of spatial value. The bedrooms, on the other hand, they are faced outward with a few exceptions, and each of them has a French balcony for more privacy. But now I would like to talk about the potential of the pergola and the public <clears throat> or half public street and meeting areas in the inner courtyard. I tried to translate a quote from an architecture historian from Berlin called Johann Friedrich Geist. Here you see it in German, but I'll try to um, translate it for you. Um, the Laubenganghaus is actually a word with a friendly sound in German. Leaves, arbor, allow, vacation, a variety of pleasant word meanings are grouped around this Germanic root, which probably has something to do with finding protection under a tree from which the building arbor develops as a covered forecourt for light houseworks and for receiving guests. You have to imagine <clears throat> it built in wood. The arcade walkway becomes just an outer walkway and loses its scopes and charm, especially when it's only placed to the north. So this was from Johann Friedrich Geist from 1936 to 2009 he lived. We all know <clears throat> excuse me, the typology of the pergola for a long time in the history of architecture. We want to value the quality of the past and confidentially continue to bring them to the present. Now a few more thoughts on the arcade or pergola. The term arbor derives from an outdoor location. The arbor is often a niche protected by greenery, providing shade, which is suitable for a quiet place to sit. So basically something positive is associated with the term. The pergola type has its origin, origins in the southern countries of Europe. It was already known in Rome through the Renaissance palaces. A historical project that improved and encouraged community life is, for example, the Corral de Conde, the largest of all community housing with 170 rooms. It was first mentioned in records around 1561. Or the building Family families there in Guise, France. The building complex complex was built by by the manufacturer in utopian socialist Godin in the middle of the 19th century. It is considered to be the first modern social housing construction. And we all know the effect, efficient and functional housing with the pergolas that were created in the Bauhaus, for example, by Hannes Meyer. In the 1950s, the arcades. Um, access house was developed as a typical design into a frequently uh, occurring structure. Most of the arcades were placed to the north side and thus to the side rooms of the building. Thus the pergolas were reduced to pure access space and not space of quality and get together area. In the 1960s and 70s, in the face of concrete protivism, the arcade was de developed as a communication area and as a public square. Examples of this typology are Ellison and Peter Smithson living streets. The added value of the arcade depends on its architectural design, its orientation, and the spatial atmosphere and its cost to cause the user. We definitely see a great potential in the arcade. It can help to strengthen the community and the living together. With the new housing Project Brisestraße, we once again embarked on the arcade as an experiment. The arcade enables the living space to be extended to the outside, to the courtyard. And it's a very economical form of access. This is particularly very efficient in buildings with a high amount of small apartments, one to two room apartments. The vertical and open staircases are located at the four corners you see here, 
and it has only two elevators, which is very good for the economic and the prices. The staircase combine collective space programs such as cafes, studios, and the common green inner courtyard and lead to approximately three meter wide mixed balcony zone. And the concept of this exit promotes social interaction and is both an ambition experience and a remarkable product. A generous and at the same time highly efficient access and at the same time balcony structures offers appropriation by the residents. It becomes the central element of the housing complex. During the pandemic, they installed bars and meeting zones here on the, on the pergola. We wanted to create a space for communication, a place to stay, a well-functioning neighborhood. Fire protection is always a big theme in Germany um, and evacuation and noise protection as well here in this, in this building. The requirements were very high and a major challenge. Areas on the floor marked in color they show the areas that can be used and be seated and others are kept clear for evacuation. Cutouts in the floor create privacy in front of the kitchens and living rooms and allow more light to enter. Here you see the section and the cutouts in the pergola, the white pergola. The courtyard together with the spacious access and balcony layer, become the social center of the residential complex. All in all, the design in this project simultaneously creates spatial proximity and retreat, privacy and urbanity, density, free open space, a life togetherness and without being anonymous in the big city. The desire for lively and spacious open spaces in the dense populated city is constantly increasing. The shift of social interaction to outdoor spaces is extremely important for well-being and is also particularly important in times of pandemic, what we've seen. In the inner courtyard, the residents organized an open air cinema with window flicks last summer during the corona isolation and quarantine. It was a cultural project that aims to support the cinemas in Berlin during the crisis when the cinemas were all closed here in Germany. It was a successful evening in a well-functioning neighborhood, a very nice evening. We are very pleased that just after six months after moving in, signs of appropriation by the residents were seen. The communication areas were well accepted and used. Now I would like to present you another um, project, the second one uh, we, we planned. Uh, it is in Bremen. It is a housing complex that is very central located nearby the train station. It's a conversion of a former military high-rise building and two new buildings um, on a common base. A total of around 170 residential units, commercial units, conference rooms and a bar and a roof terrace are planned. The client is Gebelbar, a large public housing company from Bremen. On this project, I would like to show you how we were trying to anchor the existing tower in the urban context, how to create public space of quality and green space, how to upgrade the existing building and how the building will be designed. On this slide, uh, you see a map of Bremen. Here is the um, uh, train station, the old inner city wall within the park, and the river Weser, the inner city, and that's where the project is located. It's like uh, nearby the high street from the 60s. Um, it was planned to, to regulate the inner city traffic situ situation. And our plot is about 15 minute walk from the train station. So it's very central um, located. It is situated on a kind of traffic island, as we see here on the, uh, on the floor plan. We find the elevated road in the north uh, from the 60s and all the uh, 
tram and um, traffic around the property. Noise was a big issue, as you can imagine, during the design process. I will talk about it later on. Here are some impressions of the surroundings and the existing building, um, the military high-rise um, building and the view. Um, the whole ensemble is shown here in an isometric graphic. You see it's really kind of an island. And we would like to create a new square with lots of greenery and public uses to upgrade the city area and surroundings. As already mentioned, the existing building and the two new buildings are held together by a base. It will have a large stairway and leading to a large square where a bakery and a cafe with outdoor seating will be located. In the rear area, we had, had to handle the noise from the street here on this side. With a kind of street furniture you see on this picture, we try to keep out the noise and the inner space of the block. And you will find planters and a large playground here. Now I would like to explain um, how we worked on the existing building and upgraded it to the current standards and building laws. We have upgraded the ceiling for fire and noise protections, stair and cores and the main structure were kept to keep the cost low. We added additional escape stairwells. We added further zones for installations and breakthroughs. The facade will be replaced and we add the base that brings the whole ensemble together. Here you can see the plan of the second basement, uh, the existing high-rise building with the technical zones, basement and storage areas. The graphic representation is as usual. The existing structure is shown in black, the demolition in yellow and the, uh, the new construction in red. Some new ceilings are being installed, so more storage will be generated. Here you see one floor of the basement and the parking level. The client thinks that cars are no longer um, up to date in the city. That means uh, many parking lots were replaced and in total there were only 33 parking lots realized. In the existing um, bunker, you see here on the left side, uh, it will be retained and opened to the public. Uh, it's, it won't be a museum, a bunker museum, because otherwise you would have had strict requirements, for example, for evacuation, but you can visit the bunker after prior registration. And here are a few impressions captured. Here you can see the ground floor plan with existing high-rise building and the first and second new building. So that's the existing building and the first and the second building. In the studio building here in the north, there will be a self-managed kindergarten on the ground floor. Above, there will be apartments on the first floor, which will be accessed by an arcade in the north at the noisy side of the building. And it is a so-called children's shop, not daycare center for kids because the requirements for the outdoor area and the play area would have been much higher. And there is on this small footprint, there's not enough space to realize um, the kindergarten. The building in front, you see here, will have six floors. Therefore, it's already a Sonderbau, as we call it. That means that it's that high. We have, again, uh, special requirements. There will be a commercial space uh, on the ground floor. A new underground park car park was par uh, planned. And, but later I will talk about the, the new building. I would like to start with the existing building. You see the entrance area here on the south with the cafe and the central access uh, zone with the stairwells uh, that was retained for cost uh, reasons and only new shafts were added. The entrance for the conference um, level is on the left side. It leads directly to um, to a service lift. And on the right side, there is a laundry room for very small apartments, a caretaker's office and storage rooms. The safety stairwells are located uh, at the facade here and here. 
They have ventilation openings for fresh air, which means no pressure ventilation was necessary, although it's a high-rise building. As already mentioned, the existing building um, had to be upgraded. Here is an example uh, from the ceilings. Um, we see them here on the plan. It's They are old steel-covered ceilings, which were laid next to each other, and they were filled with concrete. The ceiling tile is only six centimeter high, and we were only allowed to make new openings for the cables and insulations in the middle of the, the panels. The ceiling had to be upgraded in terms of fire and noise protection. Sheet metal shoes were attached to the cassettes, including a fire protection panel type F90 made of pomade. To improve the soundproofing, more mass had to be applied to the ceiling with a minimal floor construction. In terms of height, we were bound to the existing stairs, though. We have to um, we have now solved the problem by planning the barrier-free thresholds by step-by-step step from the hallway to the apartment into the bathroom. In the living room, we have planned a linoleum floor with little construction height. Below the fire protection ceilings, there is a sound insulation ceiling made of plasterboard. Electrical insulations can run in the space between. And special modules were developed for kitchens and bathrooms. An installation wall between them can accommodate tolerances in the existing building constructions. Here you see the first and second floor of the small skyscraper. We have a mix of one to two room apartments, nicely placed according to the grid of the existing construction. In the northern part of the building, we see a connecting passage uh, to the studio building. At this height of the building, there is also a horizontal line running around um, all the buildings, all the three buildings. This element, it summarizes the three structures. There is a semi-public conference room level on the 14th floor, we see on this plan, which means that you can rent it uh, yourself for events or conferences. And there is currently no tenant bound for uh, the building permit. We made a so-called phantom planning. That means we assume the use of the building, determine escape route length, assume possible occupancy, number of people, number of fire lifts, toilets, and kitchenettes. The project is then submitted to the uh, city on this basis. And if the use later changes, you have to make a so-called tech tour and ask for a building permit again. There is the restaurant um, with a bar on the 15th floor. According to the regulations of on places of assembly, a maximum of 200 people can accommodate it here. But however, counting the f tall two floors together in simultaneous use. We were doing some scenarios um, for the building permit to show how it, the two floors could be used uh, together. And because of the area exposed to the wind, the sudden staircase here you see here, it could not be just extended to the roof. So we um, planned it in towards the building away from the facade. Otherwise, the statics of the building, of the existing building would have had to be changed significantly. Now I would like to um, lead you to the studio building uh, via the first floor here through the, the passage. The studio building, um, there are masonette apartments on the first and second floor, four room apartments. The rooms that need to be protected from the noise face the inner courtyard here on the south side. To the north, we have a double height um, room um, in the dining area the entrance and the staircase that leads upstairs. And there is a gallery on top and bedrooms face the courtyard. The second new compact building, we find two and three room apartments on the first and second floor with a surrounding balcony zone, you see here. This is at the same time an escape and planting balcony and easily accessible for a second escape while via fire ladder. 
the balconies had to be glazed due to the noise pollution. There is a fire brigade driveway to the south. That means that the apartments can easily be accessible by ladders too. But the plinth to the residential courtyard is not passable and therefore only be reached via ladder up to eight meters. For this reason, we have combined small apartments on the upper floors and planned large four to five room apartments. These have their fire escape balconies on the sides. Here you see a section through the inner courtyard, the underground park, the central staircase, and the roof terrace on the existing high-rise building. Here is the section through the studio building with the mezzanine apartments and the existing high-rise building. And a section through the high-rise again, you see the, the staircases at the facade and the facade. And, and now I would like to talk about the material um, concept we chose um, during the design process. Uh, the facade is designed as follows. We have a concrete base in SB4. That means that we have very high requirements for the concrete and we are very excited how it will turn out. Um, we have a classic ventilated facade with metal sheet covering, window in aluminum, fiber cement, wall claddings, external textile for sun protection, and metal railings. In the course of planning, the client, the client decided to go from an energy standard of KfB uh, 55, that's standard, to a higher goal for new buildings. It means KfB 40. This resulted in an isolation thickness of 30 centimeters in the facade. With attached balconies, the thermal conditions are very bad. So we were looking for a solution to design them differently in the project and found one. The balcony slab on the ground floor here is made of concrete on which we'll stand, on this uh, we'll stand all the balconies for the uh, floors above. And it will be a light steel construction with columns that are only anchored to the rear and thus allows less thermal transmission. The balcony slab carries the weight down here on the concrete. For the studio building, we planned a concrete structures, balconies, and as already described, an arcade on the north side. Otherwise, the materials used, um, they're about the same things like in the other two buildings. Finally, I would like to show you um, some pictures of the entire ensemble from competition and uh, also the planning phase. The courtyard, the green inner courtyard. And now the abstract floor plans, it allows you to see the structures uh, more clearly of the individual uh, buildings. Well, finally, uh, let's have a look in the future. The demolitions have begun. Um, not of the, the existing high-rise, but of the surroundings. And the local planning office in Berlin has started with the implementation planning. We'll be still involved in the project with plan reviews and the artistic construction management for the project. And construction prices in Germany are currently rapidly rising. So we have a cost increase of 20% per year right now. So hopefully the building will be planned as realized as um, will be realized as we as we planned it. Um, yeah, I think there is still some time to show you a uh, exhibition project we made for the uh, Vitra Design Museum. It's called Together. Um, for about 10 years, a growing social movement has been observed that advocates community sharing and participation. 
This paradigm sharp shift in social values is also reflected in the architecture. In recent years, more and more innovative communal housing projects have emerged, which were often initiated from bottom up, for example, by the residents themselves and designed and implemented in cooperation, in cooperation with architects. These projects are example of constantly growing number of architectural solutions that show how, to we, how we make an, our everyday lives more livable by sharing rooms and facilities. This exhibition was curated by Ilka and Andreas Ruby and us for the Vitra Design Museum. Topics of the exhibition were, example, were for example, what has happened until now, uh, the collective architecture from 1800, 1800 till 2000, uh, oh, there is a mistake, 23, sorry, um, a city for people, uh, better together, and the value of common areas, a new architecture of the community, appropriation, and build, build examples. We have chosen various interesting projects on the subject of collective housing from different countries and have recre recreated them on a scale of one-to-one -one using models, films, and a cluster apartment. Each building in the city has to serve a purpose for the community within the city. In the exhibition, we have showed how to meager resource of living space can be dealt with and what the architecture of the new community looks like and can look like. And here you, see, you can see a um, replica of a one to of an apartment in one to one with a communal kitchen. Uh, with individual rooms, with shared rooms, apart um, and bathrooms, etc. The exhibition was shown at the Vitra Design Museum, the Grassi Museum in Leipzig, and the Museum für, for Kunst und Gewerbe in Hamburg. If you would like to find out more about the new forms of living, I recommend to the exhibition catalog. Here you can see all the collective co collected works and explained backgrounds information. Participating architectures, architects of the exhibitions with their built examples were, for example, Dorte Mandrup, E.V. Jesko Fetzer, Heide von Beckerath, Hütten und Paläste, Pool Architects, Ensmann Fischer, uh, Schneider Studer Prismas, and many more. Yeah, thank you very much for your interest and attention. That's the end of my presentation. Um, all right. Um, thanks very much, uh, Verena. I think we, 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 we have to stop uh, at some point. So, uh, we, we, you know, you have uh, many other things to, to do today. Um, thanks a lot for, for being with us. It was great uh, learning uh, firsthand about your work. Uh, we're really thankful for, for the opportunity. Um, and um, uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending this uh, event. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for helping organize uh, the whole thing as always. Uh, wow. And um, yeah, looking forward to um, um, seeing you perhaps uh, another time. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, yeah, I hope you you learned a bit about uh, German projects. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.